Hey everybody, I just got done watching Marianne uh, on Netflix and I watched it in French with English subtitles. This is going to be, hopefully, a micro react about it. Um, it's be it's beginning of spooky season, right? It's almost October and um, I'm really, really excited about it because I love autumn. Autumn is my favorite, favorite season. Uh, my second favorite season is probably summer, but that's just because I'm terrible and love about 90 to 100 degree Fahrenheit uh, dry heat out here in the desert because it doesn't hurt the metal in my back as much, although the air conditioning sucks. So my second favorite season is, is summer, but spooky season. It is almost October. And so I wanted to kick it off right. I was kind of like, okay, I'm in the mood for something spooky. So what does Netflix have? And at least here in the States, I was like a little bit disappointed in Netflix's um, selection. <laughs> Although obviously you can always rewatch House on Haunted Hill, um, which is fantastic. Or The Curious Creations of Christine McConnell, which I am sad there's not a second season of that. That was cool. It was like really um, kind of macabre, Martha Stewart-esque sort of show with elements of skit uh, based stuff in it and I, I liked it. It was like crafting and cooking with skits that were kind of, not kind of, they were dark comedy. I dug it so much. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Marianne. And I can't really describe to you <laughs> how much I enjoyed it. It took me a few days to watch it because I was in between doing LSAT prep, which now I'm done with that, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> and uh, and um, and then filing some other applications for work, and then for continuing education in case I do a PhD instead of a JD, because I'm a dork and I'm thinking about being a professor. Embrace the nerd uh, inside. Embrace it. I know I have over the years. So Marianne is spooky as hell <laughs> in a lot of ways for me. For some people who are like, oh, this is kind of, uh, like, I can just hear it. There's always going to be some people who are like, there are things that they don't like, right? And this is true. Like for me, it's a subjective thing. Okay. I'll review and to be honest, unless something really is done poorly, um, all reviews are just subjective stuff that we watch, right? So if I were to break it down, I'd just say, there is definitely gore. <laughs> um, not a, a lot compared to some horror movies I've seen, but enough that I feel like I need to say that uh, because for some people that's a thing that they don't handle very well or they're not a huge fan of it. There's definitely the supernatural element because this entire series is about a writer <laughs> who, um, what they write in their, um, their, they write horror books, right? A series of horror books. And when it comes down to it, what she is writing is becoming real. So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's unnerving. There is a fair amount of possession and other things that go on in it. And I think that's also a thing that I'm like, that's also part of the plot line. If you don't like that, you've been, you've been warned. I don't feel like it's actually um, as freaky as they could have made it, but it was freaky enough that I was like, okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the uncomfortableness here. <laughs> so it was, it was, uh, it was good. Oh my gosh, it was so good. So like the setting is mainly in her childhood home. Okay, you spend some time in the city at the beginning of the series and then quickly she goes home. Um, and that's where everything originally started. And there's this mystery as to where Marianne came from in the first place, which is a spirit of a person who is, I guess, you know, manifesting and killing people right and it's oh i just i'm i'm tr i'm i'm coming short of words because i'm just like this is just so it was it was so it was such like a typical storyline in a lot of ways but the way they executed it was so wonderful i love the music the music was great i remember i was watching it with my mom in the front room and my dad wasn't watching it he was on the computer and even he was like he was like i'm not even watching this and it sounds horrifying <laughs> because the music and the sound effects and everything was, they were that good, okay? It added such ambiance to the overall um, viewing experience that even somebody who wasn't even watching it, who was in the same room was like, I'm not even watching it and I'm getting really creeped out here. Um, so there's that. So as a viewer, if you're a person who um, 
really likes horror films that execute the ambiance part very well, especially with sound effects and music, and knowing when to parse out the music and the silence. Oh man, yeah, Marianne, the series does that very well. Um, there's also nudity. I, I don't really, I mean, I don't really care, but some people do, so I have to tell people, yes, there's nudity. We're, I personally feel like we as Americans are much too sensitive about something that's just a basic part of nature. However, growing up in a Protestant household, I understand um, <laughs> why some people are like that still, and that's okay, which is why I'm saying something about it, because people are comfortable with different things. So, yeah, it, it reeled in me in from the beginning, and it held my attention all the way through. I'm sorry, the, the fall weather I love, but it's making my spine stiff. Um, anyway, so, it, it, also the main character, Emma, she is insufferable, <laughs> but in just the right way. I feel like there's, there's definitely character development, okay, so <laughs> she's insufferable for quite a bit of the series. But again, character development. And I think that her alcoholism is portrayed really well. I feel like that there are ways that you can do that, like with a character, right? There are ways that you can portray a character well in a way that you can't, especially when they're al they have alcoholism or when they um, are hiding or running away from their troubles, right? Like her writing things and then them happening and people dying. And it's just, it's, it's, it's good. They did a good job with it. It's, um... There's also like a constant amount of foreshadowing, I feel like, and I feel like if I watch this again, I'll notice it even more. It just, I feel like it's woven into every little bit, like every episode, I feel like there's foreshadowing. And it's not just because of her writing, Emma's writing, but I feel like it's because of her dreams, right? Because her dreams are a big part of it. And uh, that's also why the ending didn't really surprise me in a lot of ways. I actually liked the ending. Um, I'm not going to talk about it other than saying like I saw the ending coming because of some of the foreshadowing. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I was like watching it being like, oh no, oh no, no. Oh, I have a moth. Oh no, a moth got into my room. How dare, go away, sweetheart. I love you, but no. I'm trying to find places because it's getting cool outside and before it was hot. So, and I mean like 90 degrees Fahrenheit hot, now it's all of a sudden 70 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> the desert, Las Vegas is, yeah, desert, desert weather. Anyway, um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was good. And I don't feel like the special effects were super duper, um, outs like I felt like they were good for a series. Okay, that moth is taking me off. I love how it's like, hey, it's autumn. All the cold things want to come inside. We're like, hi. Anyway. Mothy. Mothy. But anywho, it was it was really good. Um, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> I have ADHD and I'm like, moth, go away. Uh, yeah, the constant foreshadowing was cool. The special effects were actually pretty good. They weren't like, I know some people were like, oh, well, this I was a little disappointed with. I'm not gonna go into what it is. And I'm gonna be like, no, I wasn't at all because there were layers to Marianne as a character and then all the other effects that I thought were done really well, especially like the, the dream or vision kind of moments. Oh, ooh, those got really spooky um, sometimes. They were just, again, another example of them doing, um, doing, uh, shooting it very well with the music and the silence and the lighting and just when those things would happen and how eerie they would be and one of my favorite things in the world is when like somebody's fingers are like coming around the thing and they use that a lot I had nightmares as a kid <laughs> we'll just call them nightmares and when I lived in a certain place and uh, things like that <laughs> so I was like oh that's horribly relatable <laughs> so uh, it was definitely eerie. I was a bit surprised by the gun element in it. There is a use of guns in the latter part, um, a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. And I had to remind myself, I'm like, duh. You know, I'm used to watching BBC stuff, which UK stuff, their gun laws are like way different um, than France's. And I was just like, oh, that's right. They, they, okay, it's different there. <laughs> okay, I was like startled, like, wait, what? And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. My dad actually reminded me of that. He's like, Kelly, they're not in the UK, they're in France. They have different gun laws. I'm like, oh, that's right. <laughs> I was like, why does this civilian have? Oh, never mind. So, <laughs> um, which, you know, here in the US, ew, no, it's, um, 
a very serious uh, issue. Um, yeah, and I'm not. I'm not gonna go in. I'm not gonna go into that here. Just, but yeah, I feel like I feel like there's a difference between, for me personally, urban laws versus if you live in rural places. Uh, I think that mainly has to do with survival. Um, anyway, not gonna say anything other than that. Um, but yeah, it's just it was so good. I really liked Marianne. I really did. I can't gush about it enough. It was good. I liked it. Uh, and I think, I think that's it. I had like little notes, I'm like, yeah. Like I said, ADHD, have a little bit of talking points. I think the last bit I'm probably gonna say is that I, I know I was a bit biased because I liked the, uh, I liked the setting a lot of her hometown, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. <laughs> um, if it was, if it was something in Spanish or Italian, I'd be able to pronounce it, but I can't, I can't. I will not, I will not butcher French. <laughs> it's just, I cannot. It's too pretty a language and my American ass is not going to try. So, <laughs> um, it's maybe just because I, I, what it was is the setting is I might just miss my, um, my hometown, even though I grew up in an ag city of Salinas um, next door, but my hometown is actually Monterey, California, and seeing the coastal um, town and, and all of that, I was like, oh, yeah. I miss, I miss being by the coast. I really, really do. I, I miss it. And when we moved to Las Vegas, I knew that I would, I would miss my water. <laughs> but I haven't lived in Salinas since I was nine years old, but I lived in um, Oakland in California when I was at dorm for quite a while. So, yeah. I'm actually trying to figure out a way to move back up towards water. So I don't know how much longer I'll stay here in Vegas, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I loved the setting. The setting was great. The acting was also good. I mean, I think that kind of goes without saying if I'm gushing about it this much. I felt like the acting was good. And there were definitely some plot twists. Again, for me, they weren't plot twists because I, I saw the foreshadowing and I was like, this is probably going to happen. And it did. Um, but yeah, good times. So if you need something to kick off the spooky season, I would recommend Marianne. Again, I watched it in French with English subtitles simply because that's my preference. If at all possible, I always like to watch something in its original language. Even if I have to deal with the inconsistencies of translation and subtitles. French, not so much, but when you get into some other languages, yes, of course, there's like translation issues. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the English uh, dub that I did see a little bit of wasn't bad. Uh, but I only saw part of the first episode in, in, in the English dub, so that's really all I can say about that. So go watch Marianne if you are trying to get into the mood this October for spooky season, heading up towards Halloween, even for those of you who do not celebrate it. Perhaps you just like horror and you want something a little bit mysterious, eerie, and just good, good adventure to watch, and it is. It's a heck of a ride. Go watch it. <laughs> So this has been about Marianne and Netflix, and thank you for watching. This is Kelly with Eclectic Entries, and um, if you like my channel, please subscribe, ring the bell, so you know when I come out with new videos. They're travel related, pop culture related, more like this one, anything from uh, web series to TV series to movies to books and to anime. Um, and yeah, and then some disability uh, related content sometimes because I'm um, I'm a long-term patient, chronic patient with scoliosis and spinal complications. So that's kind of the, runs the gamut of, of what a lot of my channel's about. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and um, hopefully you have a good week and survive your Monday. <laughs> Cause Mondays sometimes, all right? Take care as you're able, okay? Bye.